Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kamlesh Sharchanani. Uh, first of all, before I begin this topic uh, on a data center project landscape, the guide, I would like to thank uh, Bixi for giving us opportunity to talk on uh, data center subject. So, uh, uh, with 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 the first slide itself, uh, like most industries, uh, if I just begin with you know the uh, one quote, uh, the like most industry data center industry has evolved especially in the recent years. Why I have chosen this topic in data for the data center life cycle, the guide, with some thought because in data center industry, generally staff either has a specialization in design, operation, or in execution, or in the other side we see, uh, we have OEM partners to deliver respective equipment being used on in data center. Uh, similarly, for service industries, for various uh, services, uh, uh, example, design consultation, cost consultation, licensing consultation, testing and commissioning agencies, certification agencies, system integra integration, so and so forth. They all are well versed in their respective se segment, especially for a project requirement and so as timeline uh, for the respective uh, uh, services and the, uh, you know, the product as well. But when it comes to check on a complete project life cycle, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, from inception, it is it is difficult to get an idea to get end to end timeline. I will try and address these things which are not just limited to design and execution, also give a flavor on a business planning. So that's the, you know, uh, uh, whole idea of choosing this topic. I wanted to you know, mention that uh, what are the particulars I covered in this uh, uh, data center project life cycle as a guide. Uh, these particulars are, you know, I'll just begin with my cap about our capital in uh, uh, one or two minutes. Then subsequently I'll move on the, you know, what are the growth drivers in data center industries followed by challenges in uh, what we, you know, follow execution strategies for building a large data centers. And of course, uh, we will also touch upon the data center costing, which is very, very important subject uh, in the current uh, uh, situation. Uh, and further, we will touch upon a design optimization because that's a key, uh, uh, you know, considering, you know, uh, the data centers are the power guzzlers. What are the design op optimization we do? Uh, and, 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 you know, uh, since that, as I said, data center is, uh, you know, a new industry which has evolved unlike other industry. We also need a support from you know local authority offices to relax some norms because we do not have a uh, uh, any separate data center policy in India, and we will also touch upon uh, what are the factors involved in testing and commissioning for a large DC to you know uh, uh, go on uh, uh, live, and 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 finally not the least which is data center operation. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, before I begin on a technical, I would like to take an opportunity to talk on uh, who we are. So the Capital Land is one of the Asia's largest diversified real estate group and our headquartered in Singapore. Uh, uh, our asset management is, you know, about uh, 137.7 billion. Uh, we are Asia's largest diversified real estate. And, and if I look at our presence, we are present in 268 cities over 48 countries. Our, uh, we, we are also expanding you know, markets in India, Vietnam, Australia, Europe and US. This is specifically I'm talking from a data center perspective, though we are already present you know, in these cities uh, with respect to the real estate uh, you know, segment. But we'll also touch upon the data center in the next slide. Uh, the, uh, our capital in data center business is uh, uh, present in following uh, uh, countries. Uh, but before that, you know, I would say we have a domain expertise in data center where we deliver scalable and flexible solution uh, for the need, need of our customers. And, and if I talk about our presence, we are present in Singapore with four data centers. We do have 11 data centers in Europe and one large hyperscaler data center in China. Back to India, we have a, a green. We have a plan for greenfield data centers in starting from Mumbai, Chennai, Noida, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. That's that's our plan. You know, uh, in short, from a capital insight. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, 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 before you know, uh, before I begin this uh, topic, 
I would like to, you know, uh, uh, give a what is the new business trends which is happening, you know. So maybe maybe the time has changed in the current digital world where earlier people used to adapt to technology. Today, technology is adapting to people. That's the change which has happened. So the customer interactions are flipping. The world will won't come to your IT. It's IT will need to go to the world. That's a change we have seen in the recent times. That's where we have seen there's a huge growth happening in the market, especially in the data center segment. So moving on to the uh, next slide uh, with the growth drivers, I want to start you know, uh, 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 with this topic. Uh, but before that, we have witnessed, you know, we have witnessed uh, 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 data center market growth is happening at a, around 25% of a CAGR, which is, you know, 25% uh, of compounded annual growth rate. Let's look at, you know, what are the growth drivers? Before pandemic, there were 400 million smartphone users. Now this market has touched around 500 million users, uh, especially I'm talking about for smartphone users. And of course, usage has also increased uh, uh, drastically for uh, individual smartphone users. And in last five to six years, we have also witnessed data traffic has also grew by 60 times. Look at the, you know, the growth drivers we are talking about. There is an increase in adoption of cloud services. I mean, if, if I give an example of, you know, uh, how this cloud services actually, you know, increase, you know, capacity requirement. Uh, sometime ago, I was talking to one of my friend who is uh, working for a cloud, uh, you know, working for a cloud service business. He did mention that uh, uh, recently uh, there were few hospitals in Maharashtra get on a cloud services. This is just a one segment. Imagine the, the multiple segments when they get on the cloud. So it, it, it talks about a huge growth story for India. We also observed, you know, uh, during this pandemic, captive data centers have faced a lot of challenges to operate 24 by 7 in a shared environment. What is the reason of, you know, talking here is because in this pandemic, it was very difficult for a captive data center to operate because uh, there is no man is operating in, in, in a shared building environment. So it was very tough for these data center to operate 24 by 7. So uh, in, 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 uh, in a given time, we may see these captive data center will migrate to the colo data centers. And that's how we will see the growth you know, happening in this uh, uh, segment. There are other demand drivers uh, uh, like you know, adoption of G, uh, 5G, smart city initiatives, IoT, artificial intelligence, government initiatives for a digital India. All these demand drivers, we come across one or the other social media. But, but what is not covered here? I would like to you know, touch upon that, which you may not have come across in one or the other you know, uh, uh, platforms. Supply chain, supply chain, which recently got disrupted during this pandemic. This has definitely given an opportunity for Indian continent to get established manufacturing hub due, in due course of time. And this will further enhance demand for data center. I think, I think, I think we are very clear that what is a you know, growth story for India today. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, uh, so this slide depicts on a capacity projections for next one decade. You can see this slide by 2020, we were able to set up only 500 megawatt of IT load in last 20 years. Look at the projection which we are seeing. It's almost five times of you know, capacity in just in one decade compared to last 20 years, we built 500 megawatt. Maybe I would like to touch upon here uh, before pandemic, uh, the industry folks actually, you know, come out with a demand requirement, which, which, which says the 500 megawatt capacity will be built by 2025. Look at the pandemic has, you know, uh, changed. This pandemic has actually changed the capacity enhancement, you know, by, for 500 megawatt will be touching by before 2024. That's a change which has happened. And, 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 and you can see that, you know, the, uh, the market shares, uh, uh, Mumbai will always be leading. 
with a 50% of you know uh, market for india followed by chennai bangalore ncr and hyderabad and and you know a, a few other cities like pune will also have a small percentage uh, for mar market share so moving on to the next slide uh, i think it's 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 you know very important to understand how the business planning take place by any organization in general specifically for a dc industry so so we develop business planning based on a growth story also we carry out market research this is very important post market research we model our business and basis which we plan for a capacity requirement and a land selection respectively it's it's really in a very important topic which i'm touching here land selection respectively so once we you know identify the land we parallelly carry out you know a budget planning with a concept plan to develop strategy with a target clients and ready for our master plan subsequently you know, uh, to do the resource planning with respect to the you know with respect to the consultation uh, consultants required for uh, dc uh, system indicators oen etc followed by the project execution execution for dc up and running so i think i think uh, that it actually clearly indicates uh, the business planning is just not limited to design and execution it's beyond that i'll also touch upon you know uh, how much timeline is actually required when we talk about a uh, complete project a life cycle of a dc we'll we'll touch upon in subsequent slide moving on to the next slide uh, the design challenges once we do away with the uh, business planning it's very important to address design challenges today data center and client requirements are so dynamic in nature which keeps changing as we build a new facilities let's look at these challenges these challenges are you know uh, the it requirements keep changing as it call for changes in infrastructure design similarly same follows when you do the virtualization and cons consolidation for your it hardware and of course the with the changing data center operating parameters for example in a large colo data center facility you may you know end up giving a, a higher temperature uh, for server all for one of your hyperscaler you know uh, end client similarly if you see uh, some client may ask for a temperature which is lower than that so the, i mean I'm, what i'm trying to address is the design challenges when you are actually building a large colo facility today we have also seen you know the need of our is a speedy de deployment for a data center in this dynamic situation and and uh, in this you know uh, in this segment we also you know try to aim for a low poe which not only helps to reduce the losses it's also you know uh, gives a optimized equipment efficiencies also finally we have seen that in due course you know uh, 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 we left out with additional white space with a constraint as a utility space in planning what i mean to say is uh, uh, as we seen that in the capacities has gone up in terms of our average rack densities you may have a white space available but you end up having a constraint on the utility which you have planned in the day one so these are the design challenges uh, which we have to you know foresee today uh, considering you know uh, next 5 to 10 years where the rack density is going to touch uh, uh, average rack density is going to touch moving on to the uh, next slide uh, so when we do a site selection while these parameters ne needs to be assessed uh, like air quality for site water availability soil quality earthquake details flood details power requirement these are the, you know the uh, the basic hygiene which we need to actually look at for a site we also look at you know the size and dimension of the land parcel corresponding to the capacity planning which we do so to get the most optimized design as a capital land we this we you know uh, uh, look at very thoroughly because uh, uh, efficiency you know and, and design optimization is our key uh, you know uh, uh, key factors when we are selecting any land parcel i think i think this factor is very important uh, because because you know uh, by selecting a land parcel with the right choice it help you to optimize design so as to you know uh, uh, deliver optimum capacity with highest efficiency 
So moving on the next slide uh, uh, in this topic. Uh, so we also follow a procurement strategy. Almost every organization uh, does this. There are, there are three different procurement strategy which we follow. First is the conventional contract, which is an item rate basis. Second is your lump sum contract. And third is a design development and a build contract. In the past, uh, we have seen that, you know, project execution used to take place with respect to, you know, a, a separate contract for a core shell, a separate contract for interior requirement, a separate contract for electrical, HVAC, LV side, and of course, for, a, you know, uh, uh, any any high voltage requirement at site. Uh, and and it, it becomes, you know, tedious task for any organization to manage, uh, you know, a site for a, for, a, for a seamless integration, you know, for a data center. So, of course, it, it really makes sense uh, to reach out only one GC for a complete project execution. But I think uh, uh, it still need to witness, you know, a good experience GC in data center segment. So the next slides, uh, let's talk on the PUE, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, which is nothing but a power usage is effectiveness. And the ratio of uh, PUE is, you know, the total facility power for data center divided by IT load. Uh, this PUE was introduced by Green Grid in 2007. We can check the total power requirement, uh, total facility power requirement. However, to measure the IT load, you know, uh, uh, there are there are there are three levels we can you know check the IT load. One at a UPS level, second at a PDU level, and third is at a uh, rack level. So this is how you know you calculate your PUE for your uh, uh, data center facility. So moving on to the next slide, uh, PUE. In our previous slides, we have discussed to aim for a low PUE. And to optimize this PUE, it's very important to break down PUE formula to target granular level for the energy optimization. I think in the interest of audience, uh, uh, I have further detailed out this PUE, uh, which is nothing but you know the electrical PUE plus mechanical PUE divided by IT loads. So we understand which segment to target to get a most optimized PUE. You can you can look at you know the electrical PUE comprises of your IT power, UPS losses, uh, UPS PDU losses, battery charging load, transformer losses, transmission losses, and 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 you know the lighting power requirement. Whereas the mechanical PUE comprises of your HVAC load uh, with a crack load, chiller load, pump load, uh, treated fresh air load, ventilation load, and so on and so forth. So we know which area to target where I can minimize the losses, not just losses, also to optimize, you know, the electro electromechanical power, which help me to reduce the PUE. Friends, globally, there are two certification standards which we follow. One is a uptime uh, and second is a TIA 942. Largely, we have seen CAFTI data center goes for either of us uh, certification. However, uh, there are very few colo service provider who opt to go for uh, any certificate in the recent times. The major difference, you know, uh, uh, and, and if I talk about a tier three, which is, you know, almost, you know, uh, same for both for uptime or a TI 942, which says a concurrent maintainable. But the major difference between two is a redundancy level when it comes for a tier four requirement. TIA 942 says this, a two and configuration is required for every equipment. However, uh, when we talk about uptime, uh, it says it can be N plus one configuration with the fault tolerant designs. So that's uh, the major difference between two. So let's talk on the capital cost for a uh, DC. I think, uh, uh, it's it's you know very important subject to discuss uh, what is a tentative you know uh, uh, tentative percentage cost required for various data center uh, services or equipments you know uh, uh, being installed uh, maybe you know i would like to touch upon uh, per megawatt cost being estimated for uh, indian subcontinent but before that you know let's look at you know how this uh, the percentage is actually you know divided in the various uh, streams if you look at the major you know cost goes in power 
followed by your you know mechanical then the building core and shell uh, you know followed by the you know the your soft cost your substation cost and instrumentation cost and further if you want to see a breakout between mechanical and hvc we are, it's it's already there but but you know when we want to make a business case you need to know that what is the per megawatt cost you are incurring so so when we make a business case the the, the capex requirements hovers between 6 to 6.5 million us dollar on a per megawatt it load requirement which includes your uh, land which includes you know your construction which also includes your amenity and and you know, finally dc up and running however if you talk about only on a mne site which is nothing but a mep uh, mep cost uh, you know which 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 varies between 3.8 to 4.5 4.3 uh, million us dollar per megawatt of it load requirement so so you know uh, when 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 we speak to you know a lot of stakeholders uh, uh, in this segment they tend to work out an average cost being incurred in the recent past projects but the fact is it is always different from one project to another project let me give an example uh, why it is you know why it can be so different Uh, in one scenario, uh, you can take an average rack density for any uh, data center facility, which can be a five uh, kW, you know, per rack. In a second scenario, you can, you know, consider a ten kW average rack density. So, so your power requirement gets, you know, got double. It's 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 you know my space requirement got double, my capex requirement goes double. Let's look at that. First, let's talk about you know the space requirement. your space requirement is not going to be doubled on account of double the rack density but it will marginally increase of space on account of increased equipment capacities so the difference is your white space remains same but what is changing is your marginal cost on account of equipment capacity when you are actually taking a 10 kw of average, average rack densities so you can you know figure out when uh, As, as i as i mentioned uh, the per megawatt cost for a total project which hovers between 6 to 6.5 million us dollar will it really stand good when we are you know when we are increasing the rack density so i think uh, 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 the answer is it can further go down if the average density goes up because it works on economies of scale similarly when you want to compare uh, uh, cost for you know amenity system amenity system may not necessarily be doubled because of the fact uh, you know when you divide you know the uh, amenity which is nothing me mechanical and electrical system cost for 5 kw average rack density uh, may be x but in case of a 10 kw per rack it may not be 2x because your total cost of amenity you know have a 50% of a, uh, capital items and 50% of your low side work obviously your low side work may not get double it may marginally increase however your uh, equipment capacity will get double eventually you know uh, uh, so so what i'm trying to say is there will be a marginal increase rather than you know the, the the capex being incurred double in this so what what it you know indicates here is the cost necessary you know uh, not to be double when you are increasing the rack density but it increases marginally based on the you know space and based on the uh, you know uh, the capacity which we select moving on the next slide uh, you know the reason for showing this slide uh, which is nothing but electrical distribution system in data center uh, you know i just wanted to make you understand how power distribution take place in large data center and what is the intensity of electrical losses due to high rating equipment for any large co location facility you can see that you know uh, uh, i have shown it starting from you know the uh, uh, the ehv power from 220 kv goes back to the you know the rack power supply similarly it follows for you know the hvc power requirement i think in my previous slide i have explained that how it is important for us to optimize the poe so these are the target areas where we need to attack to ensure that uh, you know uh, the losses with respect to distribution can be minimized by a effective way of you know placement of equipments 
also selecting a highly efficient equipments so moving on to the next slide uh, so here is a, you know uh, the crux of project timeline as we uh, uh, you know okay so the next slide again you know depicts about uh, uh, what are the losses we incur because of the you know electrical distribution take place in large data center facility you can see this you know there are transformer losses there are distribution losses again a transformer losses on account of you know uh, rack being powered through ups and the losses with you know the various uh, chain of you know uh, supply to ups output panel so so i think if we address these you know segments we would understand uh, you know uh, how efficiently we can place our utilities so as my rack corresponding to those utilities also so moving on to the next slide uh, uh, I, I think i think the, the the crux of you know project timeline here we can you know uh, uh, what i'm trying to talk about in a project life cycle when someone says you know uh, it takes not more than two and a half year with respect to design and execution is it really hold true I'm, I'm, uh, is it really hold true so let let me you know go back to the what what kind of a design optimization we do so these are the some you know uh, factors we consider with respect to electrical and mechanical load uh, uh, by placement of you know ups pdus in uh, uh, crack and paho galleries uh, you know layout planning which we do uh, whereas we have kept ups output panels beside our you know uh, paho and crack uh, beside the paho and crack room around the server halls pods placement of ST lt panels in respective server hall flows along with the dry type distribution so these are the few you know uh, 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 optimization you know which we generally uh, you know tend to follow when we are making a large uh, co location facility so i'm i'm sorry i actually jumped in the next slide uh, uh, i'm just going to talk about the data center timeline uh, here is actually the crux of you know my topic uh, which i talked uh, in, in the beginning the project life cycle when we say uh, the project is only you know we can complete in two or two and a half years with respect to design and you know execution is it re really so no so what we know what what it actually does you take couple of months to do the market research and after that you know you carry out uh, land selection uh, you know uh, upon your capacity planning followed by you carry out a legal and technical due diligence on the respective land parcels and 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 you also you know further as we select your land parcel then you carry out you know design and onboarding process for the various consultant so look at these timelines and and after that you know again four to six months for a pre construction approval because uh, in india we we you know it goes you know uh, uh, almost 12 months from one state to another state if i look at you know uh, uh, many times maharashtra we can we can consider around 6 months to get a uh, required appro approval to go for a uh, site construction activity if if i look at you know the another geography uh, which is which is you know uh, like tamil nadu it may go up to the 8 to 12 months to get an approval uh, to begin our construction activity at site followed by you are you know the, the the construction requirement which is nothing but 12 to 15 months and uh, to complete mep work uh, which is 7 to 9 months and finally we end up with the testing and commissioning when when we wanted to you know when we when we hand over to the uh, for a early access for in some clients if ask for an early access we can we can ready with that so i think uh, this slide clearly depicts and 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 clearly talks on what is the actual timeline we see when when the data center has to you know uh, plan from an inception to the go live is it really between 42 to uh, 48 months i'm i'm just leaving this you know question to the audience uh, uh, to evaluate uh, it is just is it just limited to design and execution or is beyond that i think i think largely you know uh, most organization large corporations uh, this is a timeline you know uh, which, which which generally happens uh, for the for the for the any data center you know to execute now i just wanted to you know touch upon uh, you know the uh, help required to relax norms uh, we have seen in recent times uh, up has come up with a data center policy where they have you know relaxed some of the norms uh, with respect to parking 
you know with respect to fsi uh, you know having a maximum ground coverage area back to maharashtra uh, there are you know two three notifications have been issued in last couple of years which has relaxed parking which has also you know uh, relaxed on the fsi uh, restrictions also now uh, we have seen uh, tamil nadu is also coming with a new data center policy it's on the draft stage we may see that you know this data center uh, policy may enforce uh, in next couple of months so the so idea you know uh, to show this slide is you know and to use this platform and communicate to authority that uh, please look at a data center uh, industry as a separate you know uh, segment because uh, uh, as i said in the beginning uh, unlike other industry data center industry is also evolved in the recent years uh and you can't compare this data center industry with the other industry where uh, where where you know uh, we don't require so much of a parking at site because the overall main power even if i look at a large facility you may not increase beyond 100 numbers at site at any given point of time so what do, why we require you know so much of parking at site uh, similarly you know uh, we we also feel uh, we also feel that you know to get a, a good efficiency for a data center uh if we keep a dg sets on uh, 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 keeping in its stacks with the g plus 1 or a g plus 5 it it gives us a good efficiency similarly for fsi restrictions uh, i think couple of years ago uh, maharashtra has given a, a notification uh, maharashtra government with respect to mdc they have relaxed you know the height restriction in data center because in large co location data center we generally go height beyond you know 6 meter uh, or 7 meter or 8 meter uh if if i talk about a fsi uh, uh, when you go beyond 4.5 or a 4.8 meter the additional height counts in the fsi i think i think the new data center policy which are coming uh, in those states which i mentioned they are relaxing this norms so uh, uh, there are few more you know uh, we are expecting from uh, authority to help us giving you know stamp duty exemption electricity duty exemptions uh, exemption of the boundary wall uh, height norms because you know uh, uh, we feel that uh, the data centers are you know uh, most vulnerable we need to you know secure them uh, from any physical uh, threat uh, uh, given with you know open access permission to a third party uh, third party ppa to trade you know uh, for a renewable captive power plants so i think uh, i think i want to use this platform to communicate local authority to you know uh, help us to relax these norms i just wanted to touch upon you know what we do you know when we done uh, you know uh, the execution of uh, uh, you know uh, data center at the last leg we do a testing commissioning these are the steps which generally we follow in level 0 uh, you know uh, we create a script for a testing and commissioning level 1 uh, we carry out a factory acceptance test uh, level 2 uh we make sure that you know the uh, uh the equipments which 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 we received back at site these are verified as per our specification and requirement and you know uh, uh i think i think in this what is missing here is the level 3 level 4 and level 5 which you know uh, finally talks on the uh, uh, you know the uh, commissioning of a data center with iset uh last but not the least uh, the slide which talks about you know the operation uh, you know uh, challenges uh, well this slide you know depicts the data center efficiency is very very important uh, uh, to address you know because because we have you know seen this almost 60% of you know your operation goes uh, operation cost goes around energy energy bills so it's very important to address you know i already touch upon how you know we can optimize the efficiency uh, how we can you know aim for lowering the uh, pue uh, 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 and 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 finally you know i just wanted to quote here uh, uh, if if one one has to actually you know uh, uh, use the internet search uh, it takes about you know uh, around 0.0003 uh, kilowatt hour of energy uh, to put this in perspective uh, uh, which is nothing but you know the 17 seconds of your 60 watt bulb so imagine how many guys or how many you know people who you know uh, uh, use this internet search at any given point of time so uh, so what i want to say is actually uh, you know uh, 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 this seems very very low when you talk about you know any internet search 
uh, on a one gadget but it it uh, the volume is so so high when when you know almost you know uh, everybody is actually working on the gadget some industry experts you know uh, 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 experts says that you know data center uh, are in a position to use between uh, 3 to 4 percentage of a global energy by 2025 even a slight improvement uh, can yield, yield a substantial cost uh, saving also can cut million tons of uh, co2 emissions that, and the, that's that's a key here uh, i think i think as a data center industry as a whole uh, we must take you know take a pledge uh, 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 you know uh, to uh, to go go on a sustainability model where where you know uh, uh, we go for a carbon neutrality by 2040 or 2050 uh, we as a capital land uh, we have taken a pledge uh, as our sustainability you know uh, 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 target is by 2030 we will achieve a carbon neutrality so that uh, I, i think i think with this quote i want to end uh, uh, this topic uh, uh, and, and and thank you so much for you know uh, giving us a valuable time uh, if anything i would like to address uh, please do reach out to me thank you so much